Hey everybody, David here, and we are back with another video. Hopefully everybody is doing well, and in today's video, I am going to be talking about some form and technique over the exercise, the Romanian deadlift, or for short, the RDL. And to grow that posterior chain, I feel like this exercise is very vital to use to grow that uh, back side of the body. So this is going to target your hamstrings, your glutes. You're also going to get some back activation. Your core is going to be stressed on this exercise as well. And a lot of people get this one messed up because of one sole factor, and it is the hip hinge. And I'll explain what more of the hip hinge is, but this is a very vital movement if you want to grow that posterior chain, and the RDL evolves this. And as I talk through this exercise today, I have some different variations I'm going to show you in the videos I provide in this. And I have a dumbbell, I have barbell, and I have a hex bar. My favorite's a hex bar. And if you want to grow some good hamstring strength and some glute strength, this is going to be an exercise that you want to include in a program, okay? I am a very big fan of the RDL. I really enjoy it. I provide all my clients with that exercise. So if you ask them in their program, and everybody, yeah, I know what an RDL is. I have some shape or form of an RDL in their program because it is, a, in my opinion, it's a variation of a deadlift, but is a very good one to utilize, especially for that posterior chain, kind of what I keep mentioning before. Now, if you're unsure how to do any other exercises, like a row or a squat or a bench press, after you get done watching this video, go ahead and check those ones out to help you out with that form and technique on that certain exercise. Now, let's hop in to this RDL video. All right, so first one we are going to be talking about is the setup. So basically with this RDL, you need to set up with your feet position. So basically what I'm saying is here, you need to have your feet shoulder or hip width. It doesn't matter, but you're going to see in the video, I kind of have a little different stance. I like to go in between when I do my RDL. There's no wrong or right way. I will say if you go shoulder width, at least in my opinion, you're going to feel a lot more in your hamstrings. If you go hip width, you're going to get a little bit more glute activation. And everybody's built differently. Everybody's mechanically different, I will say, in your body parts. But for me, when I go more narrow, I'm going to be feeling my hamstrings a lot more. So grip. What we're going to be using is overhand grip. So if you're using that barbell or the dumbbells, you're going to be using that overhand grip, okay? So both palms are going to be facing in front of you, basically. And then you can do a mixed grip as well. So alternating grip. So one pronated, one supinated. And basically, that's how you're going to hold the barbell. I would not recommend to do that if you're doing the hex bar variation or the dumbbell variation. Only with the barbell, use the alternative grip, okay? And then the barbell position, basically you want to start with that barbell on your thighs or the dumbbells on your thighs. If you're using that hex bar, like you'll see, we have the weight on our sides. So basically, the hex bar changes where the weight is going to be put on the body per se. And with the dumbbell and the barbell, it's going to be put in front of you. With the hex bar, it's going to be put on the sides. The execution of this lift, basically, when you want to initiate the movement, begin by sliding, slightly, excuse me, not sliding, uh, slightly bending your knees. Keep this slight bend throughout the movement. Hinge at the hips. So here comes this hip hinge I was talking about that's very vital for this exercise. Push your hips back while keeping your back straight. Your, your torso will naturally lean forward as you hinge the hips. So a thing I like to tell my clients a lot is either A, act like you've got a chair in front of you, you're not trying to sit in the chair. So that chair's behind you, you are trying to push your butt back towards the back of the chair, not sitting in the chair. Or I like to put them up against the wall and I make them push their butts out to that wall. So get your butt touching that wall, that's another good cue I like to tell my clients. And this is gonna be the most vital part of the lift in my opinion, because this is where you're gonna feel in the posterior chain, so the back of the body, you're gonna be feeling the hamstrings and the glutes doing this hip hinge. Lower the bar, continue hinging until the barbell reaches mid shin level or you feel a stretch in your hamstrings. Usually for me, I go a little bit below the knees and I'm feeling that stretch, but if you want a deeper stretch, go to that mid shin, but with these RDLs, you do not want to go all the way to the ground because basically we're going to be doing a 
deadlift and you could be hurting your lower back if you're going to the ground doing that RDO, trying to push that butt back as you lift it. That's a big no-no. We don't want to hurt the lower back. So make sure with that hinge, you're keeping that weight to mid shin or right below those knees and doing that hip hinge motion coming up, okay? So you want to keep that core tight. That's an important aspect. Maintain that neutral spine so you don't want to be hunched over. We don't want to look like the hunchback from Notre Dame, okay? We want to have a neutral spine so it should look like kind of at an angle, kind of like you're climbing up a mountain, as you can see in these videos that are playing why I'm describing this. And I mentioned before, engage the core, so keep it tight to protect the lower back, and then you want to return to the start. So I kind of like to describe this movement as a bird dipping its head in water, kind of like those old toys you've kind of seen, if anybody's ever seen those before, they kind of dip and come back, dip and come back. That's that hinge mo motion I am talking about in this video. And I always think of those birds that are dipping their beak into that water. I used to, when I was younger, I used to go to a barber shop that had one of those and I thought it was so awesome. So uh, uh, key points to remember with this is that hip hinge, it's not a squat, okay? The RDL is a hip hinge movement, not a squat. Focusing on moving those hips back rather than bending those knees is very important. Now, if you don't bend the knees at all, you're gonna be doing a stiff leg RDL, which hey, if you're more experienced, try that one out, see what you think about it. But I will say with the RDL, I like to have a slight bend in the knees just to make sure to take that pressure off the lower back. You don't want to have the knees fully bent because we're doing a squat, but you want to have a slight bend in them just to make sure you're not hurting that lower back because it could be a lot of stress if you're doing that stiff leg deadlift, okay, or that stiff leg RDO. There are versions of that, but you got to be more experienced in my opinion. Beginners should just stick to the regular RDL or possibly even maybe a glute bridge, okay? Bar path. If you're using that barbell or dumbbell, just make sure to keep the bar close, almost grazing the legs, and basically just keeping it close. Um, as you can see in the video, what I'm showing in the dumbbell and the barbell, the bar is very close to my thighs, to my knees, to my shins. And then you want to control the movement. So perform the exercise in a slow and controlled manner, avoid jerking movements, and use the momentum to lift the bar, okay? So very important, making sure we're not bouncing around with this movement because it can be very cautious on your back, okay? We gotta look out for that. And with this, per se, we just wanna make sure we're not going super fast because we wanna feel, we wanna have a good stretch in those uh, back of those legs, okay? Common mistakes with the RDL here is rounding the back, kind of why I mentioned before. We don't wanna round like this. We wanna have the shoulders back, kind of wanna have it at this angle as we go down and then come back up. And then overextending the knees, so slightly bending your knees throughout the movement. So I mentioned I like to have people slightly bend in their knees. I feel like no matter what you're doing, this is a common mistake because a lot of people think if it's a squat, but you you should have some slight bend in those knees. It shouldn't be fully straight. Like I'm not saying, unless you're doing a stiff leg, I mentioned that before. If you're doing a stiff leg, those legs need to be straight. But I like to have a little bit more bend in those knees just to give more of a stretch back there. Now, I am not saying that it's gonna work for everybody. I would try to keep those legs as straight as possible, but a slight bend is okay, all right? Don't be afraid of a slight bend. Now, if it's a big bend, then we're worried about that, but don't overextend basically with those knees and make sure it's not a squat. Just a very, very slight bend in those knees if you wanna do it that way. And then losing balance, make sure you keep your balance when you do this lift. It's very important to keep that core tight so you keep that bar close as well so you do not fall over when you do this. And then there's variations. As you can tell, I got the dumbbell uh, throughout the video was playing and then the hex bar as well, that's a variation. And then another one I did not take a video of is a single leg deadlift. This one's basically on one leg. This one's a very challenging exercise. So if you wanna do this version, I would start with a kickstand version of it or putting that leg up against the wall, one leg and then the other leg on the ground and do it that way before you do the single leg RDL because this variation has a lot of form and technique errors I see a lot of people doing. Like you need to keep your foot straight, you need to make sure you're going all the way back. There's a lot of issues with this one. I do not recommend beginners to do it all. So stick with the double leg or stick with a kickstand or go up against the wall with some dumbbells and put one leg on the wall behind you and then one leg on the ground and hit that RDL that way for a single leg variation. And then some progression tips with this RDL basically. Uh, gradual weight increase, so like I mentioned in all my videos, you wanna make sure you're hitting that weight with this exercise, I would say twice, not twice, excuse me, I would say two 
basically two weeks. And then you should move up and wait. And for a lower body per se, I'd say five to 10, you should be messing around, even maybe 15 per se, you should probably up your weight on a lower body exercise. It's gonna be different for upper, but for lower body, anywhere between five to 15. You can even do 20 if you're feeling comfortable, but that's more of like a, that'd be more for a squat per se. But for a lower body, five, ten, uh, five to 15, that's gonna be your sweet spot to up your weight. And then focus on your form, making sure it's perfect form so you do not hurt that lower back, kind of what we mentioned before, to prevent that injury. And then incorporating variations, so it's always good to maybe do that hex bar, maybe do that barbell, dumbbell, single leg. You got a lot of variations with the RDL using that hip hinge movement. There's also a good morning. That's a different exercise, but very similar in what you're trying to achieve. So you're just having that weight on the top, kind of what I mentioned earlier in the video, instead of on the sides or in the front. That's another good variation to use. They both use the hip hinge, okay? You just got to be careful how you use that and make sure you're doing it properly. So hopefully this video helped you all out to understand what an RDL is and how to do it per se. And overall, like I said, this is a vital exercise to grow those hamstrings, to grow those glutes as well. It's a very, puts a very big strain on your core as well. And sometimes when I do this RDL, I don't even like, you know, on my leg day, I do squats and RDLs in the same day. You know, your core is gonna be burnt after you hit this exercise because the weight's not touching that ground. You're really doing that hip hinge, pushing those hips back, really getting a big stretch on the posterior chain. Now, let me know in the comments down below what variation of RDL you use, if you are using this exercise, and how do you use it in your programming? Is, is this one of your big lifts in your programming? Or do you use a variation for um, a cyst lift per se, like a single leg? That would be more of like a variation towards the end of your lift per se. If you're a power lifter, I know you focus on the squat, the bench, and the deadlift. So this might be something that you assist with those exercises. Like I said, let me know in the comments down below. I'm really intrigued to hear how you use the RDL. And let me know also in the comments down below too on what your favorite hamstring exercise is. I'll be really interested to hear that. Now... With all that out of the way, I will see you all on the next video.